In this video, I will show you how to write the equation of a rational function given its graph. This is AP Precalculus Topic 1.11. If you appreciate this content, please show it by hitting that like button. Recall that a rational function will have a vertical asymptote or a hole at any value that will cause the denominator to equal zero. For example 1, let's rewrite this rational function h of x in factored form and find any values of x where h of x has a hole or a vertical asymptote. The numerator is the difference of two squares, so that's going to factor as x plus 2 times x minus 2. The trinomial in the denominator will surely factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared is going to be x times x. 10 is either going to factor as 2 times 5 or 1 times 10. But we know that inner plus outer must equal the middle, so probably it will be the 2 times 5. To get a positive 7x inner, we need a positive 2x and a positive 5x. So there's your factored form. Focus on the denominator as we look for the location of any hole or vertical asymptote. If there's a factor in the denominator that gets canceled out completely, that tells you where a hole is. For example, the x plus 2 cancels out with the x plus 2 in the numerator. That means we have a hole at x equals negative 2. Any factor in the denominator that does not get canceled out gives us a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 5. Example 2, find the domain of h of x from example 1. Well, a vertical asymptote and a hole, these are the places where a rational function is undefined. It will be defined everywhere else. So once you identify any vertical asymptotes and holes, you can just give the domain starting from negative infinity and skipping over any vertical asymptotes or holes. So the first interval will go from negative infinity to negative 5. And then union, negative 5 to negative 2. Union, and then negative 2 to infinity. Use all parentheses because undefined values can never be included in the domain. Example 3, new function k of x, let's write this in factored form. I notice that in the denominator we have x's on every term. So let's just quickly factor out the common factor of x before we go any further. x squared plus x minus 20. So now we can go ahead and factor. So in the numerator, this trinomial will factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared will be x times x. 12. 12 will either factor as 3 times 4, or 2 times 6, or 1 times 12. Inner plus outer must equal a middle of negative 1. So let's go with 3 and 4. To make a negative 1x middle, we will need a positive 3x inner and a negative 4x outer. Now let's bring down that x and this trinomial will factor as another binomial times a binomial. x squared will be x times x, 20. 20 is either going to factor as 4 times 5, 2 times 10, or 1 times 20. Inner plus outer must equal a middle of 1x. So let's go with the 4 and the 5. To get a middle of positive 1x, we need a negative 4x inner and a positive 5x outer. That's the answer to part A. Let's skip down to part C. I like to identify the holes early in the process because it makes some of the other things more clear. So we will have a hole for any factor in the denominator that gets completely canceled out. 
So I see that this x minus 4 is going to get canceled out. So that tells us that we have a hole at x equals 4. Looking back at part b, any zeros of the function are going to come from setting the numerator equal to 0 after canceling out any holes. That's why I did that first. So we will have a 0 at x equals negative 3. Vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes will come from the denominator, again, after canceling out any holes. So we will have two vertical asymptotes because of the two factors that remain. So we have the uh, x equals 0 and x equals negative 5. Part E, find any horizontal asymptotes. In a previous lesson, we learned that if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, then there will be a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. A quick review of y, we get a horizontal asymptote if the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of a function is a constant, and the limit of a rational function as x approaches positive or negative infinity depends on the leading terms only. So the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of k of x is the same thing as the limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity of just x squared over x to the third power. But that simplifies down to 1 over x. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the value of the fraction gets closer and closer to 0. So this limit is equal to 0. And the same is true as x approaches negative infinity. Think 1 over negative 100, 1 over negative 1,000, 1 over negative a million. It's still getting closer and closer to 0. So that's why y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Part f, we can find the domain of k of x just by looking at the vertical asymptotes and holes. The domain will be all real numbers except for any vertical asymptotes and holes. So uh, it helps to think of this as a number line and make sure you put your vertical asymptotes and, and holes in order from least to greatest. So now we can say that the, the domain will go from negative infinity to negative 5. Union, negative 5 to 0. Union, 0 to 4. Union, 4 to infinity. Part G, use a graphing calculator to help sketch the graph of k of x. Turn on your TI-84, hit the Y equals button, and type in k of x right here. Zoom 6 gives you a standard 10 by 10 window, and that's usually a pretty good place to start. So zoom 6. All right, these breaks in the graph are usually vertical asymptotes. So even though it looks like the graph stops right here, they really go on forever. We just don't have that kind of resolution on a graphing calculator. So make your graph keep going. Also be aware of the limitations of the graphing calculator in that we can see the vertical asymptote at zero and negative five, kind of. Um, but what about the whole at x equals 4. Let's take another look. Okay, we don't see anything happening at x equals 4. So a hole is not going to show up on a graphing calculator. You just have to know. To be precise, let's find the y value of the hole at x equals 4. This will be the limit of k of x as x approaches 4. But the limit of k of x as x approaches 4 will be the same as the limit of the function you get after canceling out the x minus 4's. So x plus 3 over x times x plus 5. Again, the limit of this related function as x approaches 4 is the same as the limit of the original function. 
but we can find this limit by direct substitution. In other words, um, we can just plug in 4 for x, and that's the limit. So the limit is equal to this expression. So that's 7 over 4 times 9, 7 over 36. This is the y value of the whole. 7 over 36 is a little bit less than 1 fifth. So this whole is very close to 0. Looking back at the graph and calculator, we see that the first branch is below the x-axis and approaching the asymptote. So we have something like this. Uh, let's not forget that we found the zero, the x-intercept of k of x, which is at x equals negative three. So we should graph that right now. One, two, three. So this is the zero, this is the x-intercept of the function. Looking at the graph and calculator, k of x goes from positive infinity through that zero and then negative infinity. So something like this. And we already know that the final branch is above the x-axis because of the whole being at a positive y value. So k of x looks something like this. Example four, the graph of the rational function f of x is shown above. Write an equation in factored form for f of x. We see that there is a whole at x equals four and uh, the y value seems to be about negative one half. The whole at x equals four means we need a factor of x minus four in the denominator that cancels out with an x minus four in the numerator. I'll come back to the negative one half, kind of if I have to. Also, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals two. That means we need a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator that does not get canceled out with anything. Notice the x-intercept right here. There is a 0 at x equals 3. That means we need a factor in the numerator of x minus 3 that does not get canceled out. Also, we notice that f of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. The way f of x is written so far, the leading term of the numerator would be x squared. Ignoring the constants, it's x times x, that would be x squared. The leading term of the denominator is also x squared. So we have learned that when the degrees are equal, the horizontal asymptote is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients. And that would be 1, not negative 1. So we need to modify this so that the ratio will be negative one. So we need to either put a negative in the top or the bottom, or I guess we could just put it right in the front. Making this negative makes this negative, which gives us a horizontal asymptote of negative one. Now let's check our function to see what the y value of the whole would be. Let's see if it's anywhere near negative one half. The y value of a whole at x equals c is given by y equals the limit of f of x as x approaches c. But the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x will be the same thing as the limit as x approaches 4 of the function after you cancel out the whole. So negative x minus 3 over x minus 2. This limit can be found by direct substitution. In other words, let's plug in the 4 for x. So we get this, but this simplifies down to negative 1 half. And that is exactly what we see on the graph. So no change required. This is the answer. That was so much fun. Let's do it again. Example 5. The graph of the rational function g of x is shown above. Write an equation in factored form for g of x. We see a whole at x equals 2 and approximately y equals 1 half. That tells us we need a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator that cancels out with a factor in the numerator. We see a vertical asymptote x equals 3. So that tells us that we need a 
factor in the denominator of x minus 3, that does not get canceled out. We further see a 0, the x-intercept, uh, at x equals 1. So we have a 0 at x equals 1. That tells us that we need a factor in the numerator, x minus 1, that does not cancel out. Wait, I should not have gone on to the 0 at x equals 1 without mentioning the other vertical asymptote that we see at x equals 0, the y-axis. That means we need another factor in the denominator of just plain x that does not cancel out. We also notice the horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Let's think about the limit as x approaches infinity, the end behavior. But the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x depends only on the leading terms. And uh, ignoring the negative 2 and the negative 1, we can see that the leading term of the numerator would turn out to be x squared. Similarly, the leading term of the denominator would turn out to be x to the third power. At this point, we could use a rule that says if the degree of the denominator is greater, we will have a, a horizontal asymptote y equals 0. So we are good to go as far as the horizontal asymptote is concerned. Um, we could just, uh, as a matter of understanding the rule, go one step further and simplify this down to 1 over x. As x approaches infinity, the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and the value of the expression gets closer and closer to 0. Now it's time to check the y value of the whole that would be given by this expression for g of x. Let's see if it's anywhere close to 1 half, or if we need to make some adjustment to make that happen. The y value of the whole will be the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. But instead of writing down g of x, I'm going to write the version of g of x that you would get after canceling out the whole, because that limit will be the same. So x minus 1 over x times x minus 3. This limit can be found by direct substitution. So plug in the 2 for all the x's. Hmm, this gives us negative 1 half not the positive one-half that we need. So we need to throw a negative sign into the mix to change this sign. So I think if we just put a, a negative sign out in the front or in the numerator or whatever, that will flip this. Ta-da, g of x. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. But also, if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.